happening tonight in Vancouver. BC's approach to vaccinations is what will protect the province from the kind of Delta variant outbreaks in other vaccinated countries. This from the top dock as we surpass 1 million with two doses. That summer heat is here to stay in the lower mainland, but believe it or not, this is actually one of the cooler days this week. We'll show you how some are preparing for the heat wave. There is risk of dehydration. There is risk of even sunstroke. As temperatures are set to soar here in the lower mainland later this week, homeless advocates are getting ready to provide heat relief to those who have nowhere else to go. This is City News Everywhere. There are 56 new cases of COVID-19 across the province tonight, and no new deaths have been reported in the last day. 111 people are currently in hospital, 41 are in the ICU. More than 1 million people in BC are fully vaccinated from COVID-19. 77.7% .7 of adults in this province have received at least one dose of the vaccine. And 76.2% of those aged 12 and over have received at least one shot. Dr. Bonnie Henry was speaking in Prince George today and says the province is running low on its supply of Pfizer. That shortage is expected to continue for a while. We have seen some fluctuations, as you know, in supply over the last number of months, uh, which means that some days our mass clinics will have more of one of the mRNA vaccines than the other. Currently, it is Moderna that we have quite a lot of right now and will have in the next few weeks. And we've received word that there may be some decrease in the Pfizer shipments that we're receiving, particularly in the coming weeks. We are confident that both of these mRNA vaccines are safe and effective and can be used interchangeably. There has also been a substantial drop in people across BC choosing AstraZeneca as their second dose, following the federal recommendation to opt for Pfizer or Moderna. Dr. Henry insists AstraZeneca is still a safe choice, and thousands of more shots are arriving in BC later this week. By the way, the reason Dr. Henry was in Prince George today is because she's meeting with teams in the Northern Health region. Later this week, she'll be meeting with Interior Health. We are looking at uh, continuing our plan for gradual and safe reopening, uh, hopefully with more announcements in the coming weeks about next and further steps. But every step of the way, we need to be careful because there is a situation of uh, the, the level of vaccination in the country. There's a, we have to look at uh, case levels in the country and outbreaks. We have to look at what variants of concern uh, are present in Canada and indeed the situation around the world. As you just heard, the Prime Minister is hoping to provide more in the coming weeks on plans to reopen the Canada-U.S. border, but he was short on details. The border has been shut down since May of 2020, with that closure is set to expire July 21st. Yesterday, the feds announced that fully vaccinated Canadians will be able to skip a mandatory quarantine as of July 5th. A man has been arrested following a major police incident in Richmond that left a portion of Westminster Highway blocked off for several hours this afternoon. RCMP say at around noon, bailiffs were at a home enforcing a Supreme Court order to remove a man when he apparently pointed a firearm at them. When the bailiffs backed off, the suspect went onto a balcony at the home and shot his gun several times into the air. He did eventually leave and was taken into custody at around 3 o'clock. No one was hurt. Another boiling hot day in Metro Vancouver. Here in Olympic Village, people were still laying out on the grass, getting a tan, even staying active, jogging, and there's a few people out on the water there. And trust me when I say this, today is going to be one of the cooler days this week. Summer sure has made an entrance in BC across the Lower Mainland. Record highs were set yesterday, with some cities hitting the 30s. And while we were a few few degrees down today and the same is expected tomorrow. The mercury crime climbs right back up in time for the weekends with some places set to soar into the mid 30s. A lot of people are stocking up on fans and air conditioners right now. We spoke to a few customers getting their fans and supplies outside of Canadian Tire. 
because we have a small cat. He's like uh, he's like 11 months old, and uh, he's so hot. Uh, all day he's like lying on the ground and stuff, and he's meowing. So we had to get a fan. Uh, chair and some tables so we could spend more time outside and when we're inside um, This will warm up the the kitten. Well, it's the Honeywell Turbo Force Dual fan one on top and one below here. You can see it here. Yeah, yeah it's looking the weather it looks like it's gonna get up to 33 and me and my wife just bought a new uh, condo our new apartment uh, facing southwest wood frame building on top on the top floor and it's getting hot. Honestly, just uh, standing, it's like sitting right in front of a fan, working all day, yeah, that's pretty much it. Are you working from home? Yes, I'm also working from home. Oh my says. gosh, so you don't get that like company air conditioning? Uh, no, I guess, I can't wait to go back to the office for that. BC Hydro says it is more than able to, to deliver electricity to its customers in BC, no matter how hot it gets in the coming days. Hydro says unlike the blackouts and other difficulties seen in the U.S. during a heat wave currently underway there, the Crown Utility is ready to handle all demands on its resources. It says it has been selling surplus power to energy-strapped U.S. states. And it actually feels much better now into the early evening hours. We're catching a bit of a breeze. We'll have your full seven-day forecast with City News meteorologist Michael Coos coming up. Reporting live, Crystal Adiris, City News. There are so many risks involved when we talk about uh, people who are experiencing homelessness having to deal uh, with the extreme heat in this hot weather. If you think it's hot right now, you haven't seen anything yet. Temperatures here in the lower mainland are expected to reach levels that we don't typically see until late July and early August. The homeless population is particularly vulnerable to this extreme weather, and street teams around the region are getting ready to provide relief as the mercury continues to climb. There is risk of dehydration. There is risk of even sunstroke, uh, and which can lead to death. We're talking about some pretty serious risks. Uh, in terms of folks who uh, are experiencing homelessness and dealing with the heat. Nadia Toomey with the Union Gospel Mission says their team is ready to hit the streets. Handing out water bottles, hats, t-shirts, shorts, sunscreen, that's really important. Whatever folks who are experiencing homelessness need to get through these next couple of days. Further inland in Abbotsford, where the temperature is even higher than Vancouver, the Cedar Outreach Society has set up two daytime cooling stations as part of a pilot project to assist homeless populations. So we come in with our big tents, our tables, our chairs, and then a big investment were um, large misting fans. And that alone, just being able to just stand there get cooled off just from head to toe for a few minutes makes it a lot easier to keep on going. The heat stress has been a huge problem in the past and one that's been kind of largely unrecognized by anyone who's not working in the industry. Kim Friesen with the Cedar Outreach Society says city funding and community donations help them buy generators and other equipment for their cooling stations. Back in Vancouver, the Union Gospel Mission continues to seek summer clothing donations. You know, we've got, again, that clothing that's just going to make it just a little bit more comfortable in dealing with the hot weather. We've got sunscreen, something that's just so important, SPF 30. One more thing that's really important, hats. For those seeking heat relief in Vancouver, the Union Gospel Mission's drop-in is open 2 to 4.30 p.m. Monday to Friday and 1 to 3 p.m. Saturday, Sunday. And in Abbotsford, cooling centers are open 1 to 5 at the Seven Oaks Alliance Church and in downtown Abbotsford. In Vancouver, Kier Junos, City News. A grand slam of an idea or a total strikeout? So from a fan standpoint, I, I'm, I'm a big supporter of it. I'm a big fan of it. Now, viability, you know, that's a different question. Does BC have the ability to be home to a major league baseball team? As COVID-19 cases decrease, COVID-19 vaccination rates are continuing to climb in BC, to date marking more than a million in the province with two doses. But as concern over the Delta variant looms, BC's top doctor says how we're vaccinating will ward off outbreaks other countries are seeing. I think we only need to look at what's happening in the UK and in um, some other countries where they have not prioritized immunizing, uh, especially teenagers, where we know that transmission can happen. The UK and other countries are just getting to vaccinating their teenage cohorts. 
in BC, 76.2% of those 12 and older have had a dose. So it, we can get a lot of transmission very quickly in young people. And that's why immunization is so important to protect communities, because once you get transmission in young people, you can get spillover into older people, into people who are more likely to have severe illness and end up in hospital. And we see that even in um, highly protected communities. Both the UK and Israel, with some of the highest vaccination rates in the world, are seeing Delta variant outbreaks. But even as BC has nearly 78% of those 18 plus with at least a dose, there are areas where the uptake is lower. The latest data here shows areas in central BC and the north below 50% of those eligible. In other regions, it's 70% and above. Even still, Dr. Penny Ballum, heading the vaccine rollout, expects to hit 80% in the province mid-July. The better the coverage, the easier to halt transmissions. That's why we, we're not going to stop at 80 percent. We're going to be changing our tactics to try and uh, make sure we can, uh, as Dr. Ballum likes to say, continue the ground game and, and find people. But there will be cases even in vaccinated people. As of the end of May, COVID rate in B.C. of those unvaccinated was 86 per 100,000. After dose one, that went down to about 29 per 100,000. And a week after dose two is a 15 per 100,000. So really an 80 percent decrease in risk after having your two doses of vaccine. So while we're doing well, Dr. Henry says we're not out of the woods and everyone needs to make the last push to get everyone vaccinated. For City News in Victoria, I'm News 1130's Lisa Yuzda. You can now get a day use pass to visit some popular BC parks. The province is piloting the passes for a second year to keep visitor numbers under control because of crowded trails, packed parking lots, and impacts to wildlife. Five provincial parks need a day use pass starting tomorrow Garibaldi, Golden Ears, Mount Robson, Stoamas Chief, and Joffrey Lake Parks. Passes will be available to book one day in advance of your planned visit starting at 7 o'clock in the morning. BC's Minister of Indigenous Relations says a final report on findings at the Kamloops Indian Residential School will help guide the province on how to assist others. Murray Rankin says not every First Nation is going to take the same approach to search their grounds as the Tecumloops to Sukumuk. However, he says the final report, which is expected June 30th, could also serve as a guiding document for other nations to follow if they choose to do so. Last month, the band announced it had discovered what is believed to be the remains of 215 children buried on the site of the former residential school. It wouldn't cost just peanuts and Cracker Jack to bring a Major League Baseball team to B.C. Well, Nat Bailey Stadium is home to the Vancouver Canadians, who, by the way, are still playing south of the border in an unprecedented year. There has been chatter about whether the Lower Mainland could serve as a home base to a relocated team or even a team built from scratch. We're talking about billions upon billions of dollars. And as rich as Vancouver might be and have a lot of multimillionaires, do they have enough billionaires who are willing to, say, invest in something like this? Satyar Shah is a host for Sportsnet 650. He says such a venture would be costly. You're talking about buying a team and moving it in and perhaps building a new stadium. You're talking about a couple billion dollar investment at the very least. And that, to me, is the biggest hurdle here as opposed to, you know, whether the market likes it or not. The idea came about with word that the Oakland Athletics are looking for a new temporary home. Bringing a team to Vancouver even has the backing of the city's mayor who tweeted on Tuesday that he is a longtime fan of the game. But where would a team play? Nat Bailey can only seat about 6,500. Even if you add some seats, we're talking about maybe squeezing it to eight, nine, ten thousand, 10,000. And that is still well below the standard for a Major League Baseball ballpark. And BC plays, as far as seating goes, hey, it would work out. But as far as the actual baseball diamond goes and making sure that, you know, right field, left field is uh, more than 300 feet, that's going to be hard to do, even if you start, start to retrofit BC plays. Mario Canseco with Research Co. also ran a poll on this and found half of the 800 respondents were all for seeing an MLB team here. And we know that there's people here that root for the Blue Jays or the Mariners primarily, and they are the ones who are saying if we had a Major League Baseball franchise in Vancouver, uh, those hats are going back to the drawers. I think it would be really cool if we had a baseball team because I have like a Major League one. So I've always really liked going to the Canadians games, and I think it'd be really cool to have it be something bigger. I think we're one of the biggest cities in Canada, 
and it's unfair that Toronto gets every major league team. Absolutely wonderful. The problem is the stadium. You know, we've got BC Place with the white roof and players can't see the ball in the roof, but it's the same way in Florida. There's, I think it's Tampa Bay. I, I look at it as being a four or five year plan, especially if, if you have to build a new stadium. So if BC Place can't be retrofitted, and right now there are concerns about that, then it will be really, really difficult to get something up and running within a year or two. You're talking about a long-term investment and a long-term project. In Vancouver, Maria Renouf, City News. The Vancouver Canucks have announced that Henrik and Daniel Sedin are joining the team's front office as special advisors to general manager Jim Benning. The Twins rank first and second all-time in both games played and points in Canucks history. Now that their on-ice careers are over, they will reportedly be involved with player evaluation, development, and communication from the amateur to NHL level. Living near English Bay got an early wake-up call this morning. Two helicopters were flying over the area filming a TV commercial. One of the choppers had a vehicle dangling underneath it. The other had the crew filming the commercial. Residents reported hearing them around 545 this morning, but they cleared the airspace by 7 o'clock. Vancouver's news is always available on the radio with News 1130 or online anytime at citynews1130.com. Thank you so much for watching and have a great night.